ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Every song I sing, I'll sing for you, and I hope I can bring you a smile or two. Dennis Day is brought to you by Palmolive Soap and Palmolive Shave Creams. Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope, and Palmolive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave. The Dennis Day Show, transcribed with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, Charles Dant and the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing Cruising Down the River. Cruising down the river on a Sunday afternoon with one the sun above waiting for the moon the old accordion playing a sentimental tune cruising down the river on a Sunday afternoon the birds above all sing of love a gentle sweet refrain the winds around all make a sound like softly falling rain. Just two of us together will plan a honeymoon. Cruising down the river on a Sunday. Men, if you like oceans of rich, thick, moisture-soaked lather, try the new, different Palmolive lather way to shave. A way that means smoother, more comfortable shaves for three men out of every four. Yes, the new Palmolive lather shave cream way brings smoother, more out of every four. It's a fact, men, not a promise. 1,251 men tried the new Palmolive lather way to shave. And no matter how they shaved before, 81% reported beards easier to cut. 76% said less razor pull. 71% said closer shaves, 80% smoother feeling skin. And three men out of every four reported smoother, more comfortable shaves, the Palmolive Lather Shave Cream way. Here's all you do. Wash your face with soap and water. Rinse. Soap your face thoroughly again. Do not rinse. Brush Palmolive Lather upward into beard to get the full benefit of Palmolive Lather Shave Cream's beard conditioning effect. Then shave. That's all. But you be the judge. Get Palmolive Lather Shave Cream and try the new, different Palmolive Lather Way to Shave. Remember, it's proved. Proved to give smoother, more comfortable shaves to three men out of every four. Every spring, the Weaverville Women's Club, in its untiring efforts to spread culture among the townsfolk, presents its Drama Festival, a play written, produced, and acted by the ladies themselves. Now, in last year's play, Mrs. Anderson had only a walk-on, which on opening night became a fall-on when she didn't see the chair that was in her way. <laughs> but this year, she's auditioning for no less than the leading role of heroine, and determined to get it, which is the matter now under discussion between our young hero, Dennis Day, and his girlfriend, Mildred. Golly, Dennis, if they give the lead to that Mrs. Folsom instead of Mother, she'll just die. Yeah, I know how it is. In our high school play, a couple of fellows were heartbroken when I beat them out for the part of Hamlet. <laughs> you played Hamlet? Darn right. I was sensational, too. You never heard such laughs as I got. <laughs> but Hamlet's a tragedy, Dennis. Why should they laugh? Well, when they raised the curtain, my suspenders got caught and I went up with it. <laughs> But the orchestra covered up beautifully, though. As I left the ground, they went right into the Army Air Force song. Well, that was quick thinking. Yeah. So here I'm a smash hit at Hamlet, and what kind of a job do they offer me in your mother's play? Prop man. Fair. <laughs> oh, but 
But a prop man's job is very important. Did you get all the stage props on that list they gave you? Well, all except the bloodhound for act two. I couldn't get a real bloodhound, but don't worry, I got an idea. I'm going to put ketchup on a poodle. <laughs> On a poodle? Wouldn't fool anybody, huh? Of course not. Oh, what about the revolver for Mother's Big Scene? Did you get that? Well, I couldn't get a real revolver either, but I got a swell water pistol. Look. Dennis Day, you expect the villain to shoot Mother with a water pistol? What's the difference? So instead of being rubbed out, she'll be washed up. <laughs> now listen, if you do anything to ruin Mother's chances in this place, she'll never forgive you. Oh, I know, Mildred. I wouldn't Don't do you it. Really? how seriously she's taking it? Right now, she's upstairs putting on makeup trying to make herself look like a girl of 19. Gee, she hasn't much time. The play goes on in two weeks. <laughs> it's for the rehearsal she's doing today with the director. Oh. And when she comes downstairs in her makeup, we're going to pretend we've never seen her look so young. Do you understand? Oh, sure. You can count on me. Oh, good, because we certainly don't want her to... Good morning. Why, Margaret O'Brien, what are you doing here? <laughs> Well, I'll be darned. It's you, Mrs. Anderson. Yes. And don't tell me I look like Margaret O'Brien. I'm supposed to look 19. Oh, how much more far-fetched is Margaret... Never mind. <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, Mother, I think you look simply marvelous. You're just certain to get that part. Not with that sneaky Mrs. Folsom after it, I'm not. Oh, that vile woman making those goo-goo eyes at the director. Well, then there's only one thing to do. Be so good this afternoon, the director will have to give you the lead. Come on, I'll rehearse it with you right now. You rehearse it with me? Oh, sure. I'm a wonderful actor. Come on, give me a script. Well, all right. Here, we'll take it from the middle of page eight. But it's a very dramatic scene now. Oh, I'll amaze you. Go ahead, read your line. Very well. <coughs> oh, don't look at me that way, Reginald. <laughs> If you take your love from me, I shall wither and die like a flower without the sun. My heart will lose the will to beat, for it beats but for you, Reginald. Do you hear me? You must give me your answer. My soul lies bleeding, my body racked by indescribable pain. A torment which will drive me from my mind. Spare an anguished woman, I beseech you. Speak, Reginald, speak! I lost my place. Here we are. Here we are. Please, Madeline, it is not my fault I have ceased to love you. It is simply your face. <laughs> that word happens to be fate. <laughs> hey. Yeah, it is a that. Isn't it funny how it made perfect sense the way I... <laughs> Read the next line. Yes, ma'am. You must leave this house, Madeline, and never return. No, Reginald, I will never go. I would sooner die. By heaven, girl, die you will then, for I have here a gun. Shoot, Reginald. I prefer death to a life of empty memories. Shoot. May heaven have mercy upon you. Take this. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I didn't know it was loaded, honest. <laughs> I'll go get a towel. Dennis Day, I don't know what your mother saw in your father, but I'd give anything if she hadn't. <laughs> now, get out of here. I'm going, I'm going. Gee whiz. <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am, what can I... Oh, it's you, Mrs. Folsom. Good morning, young man. Is your employer, Mr. Jacoby, in? No, ma'am, but I expect him back any minute. I'll wait. I'm looking for an old-fashioned brooch to wear in a play. Oh? And our director told us Mr. Jacoby might have the... Dennis, do you happen to have any old fash? Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Folsom. Well, Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> yes. How well you're looking, my dear. Thank 
you. I'm in excellent health. Oh, you look it, too. <laughs> I've never seen the bags under your eyes so firm and well done. <laughs> You're looking splendidly, too, darling, considering all that weight you have to carry around. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Oh, my, isn't that an unusual hat you have on? Uh, what's it made of? Horse hair? <laughs> I'm not wearing a hat. <laughs> oh, can you forgive me, darling? Oh, pardon me. Could I get you ladies anything? A Coke or a saucer of milk? The dress you're wearing, darling. Oh, thank you, dear. It's from sex. You don't say. <laughs> Potato or flour? Go to a neutral corner, Mrs. Anderson. Well, while we're on the subject, dear, you should have a little talk with your dressmaker. He's been getting away with murder. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I just don't have the advantage of your distinctive figure, that's all. Oh, really, dear? Yes. <laughs> I was trying to convince some friends only the other day that you weren't really the model for the new Hudson at all. <laughs> well, Mrs. Anderson, just because my charm has won me the part in the play... Charm? <laughs> You've got about as much charm as a piece of warmed-over liver. Oh! Wow. <laughs> and I know what you're up to with that director, too. You two-faced, hypocritical, underhanded... Oh, ladies, please. Mrs. Anderson, that's slander. Yeah? Well, you're a sneaky, deceitful, treacherous hussy, too. And what that's going to be a... quite enough, Mrs. Anderson. My lawyer will call on you tomorrow. Eh, who cares? Send over your old... Lawyer? <laughs> I should say so. You have defamed my character, and this young man is my witness. I shall see you in court. Good day. <laughs> oh, good heavens, what have I done? She's going to sue me. Yeah, for every cent you've got, probably. Well, wait a minute. What am I worried about? You don't like money? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course I do. But you're the only witness, and you won't go to court. <laughs> That's against the law. A witness has to go to court unless he's got a broken arm or a leg or... Well, what's so hard about that? <laughs> As we part, I leave you with an old Chinese proverb I just made up. <laughs> he who bites hand that feeds him soon finds hand knocking out teeth he bites food with. <laughs> Understand? Chop, chop. <laughs> oh my gosh, how do I get into things like Hello, honey boy Hi, <laughs> Mr. Jacoby Hey, what's with Mrs. Anderson? Boy, if looks were daggers right now I'd be, if you'll pardon the first syllable A porcupine <laughs> oh, She just had a... <laughs> I'm here with Mrs. Folsom and Mr. Jacoby. They said a few words about each other's figures. Oh, the Battle of the Bulges. <laughs> yeah, they got madder and madder, and then Mrs. Anderson defamed Mrs. Folsom's character. This is possible to do? Uh, I guess so, because Mrs. Folsom is going to sue her, and she wanted me to be her witness. Only I can't be, because Mrs. Anderson would kill me. Honey boy, it breaks my heart to say this, yeah. but Mrs. Folsom is one of my best customers and also a social leader in town. Oh, huh? Now, if you don't testify for her, I might as well close up the store. Oh, gosh, then I'd be out of a job. That's a logical conclusion. But I can't let that happen either. Oh, this time there's no way out. Nothing I can do. Mr. Jacoby, where do you keep your razor? Honey boy, are you crazy? Where's your razor, I said. No, honey boy, you don't mean... Yes, I don't care if I did shave this month already. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> the only thing that takes my mind off my troubles. <laughs> We'll continue this day in the life of Dennis Day in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's Dennis to sing Tea Time on the Thames. It's four on the clock, it's two hand in hand, it's 
Mrs. Anderson is being sued for slander by Mrs. Gertrude Folsom, and the only witness to the verbal assault was our young hero. If he does testify for Mrs. Folsom, he loses his home, and if he doesn't testify, he loses his job, which is as pretty a spot as he's been in during his entire career of innocent bewilderment. <laughs> we find him now bearing his troubled soul to his pal and staunch supporter, Mr. Anderson. Gosh, isn't it a mess, Mr. Anderson? Oh, my soul and praise the little white God. You certainly get yourself in some dillies, don't you? Yeah, I'll see. You're sure that Mrs. Folsom didn't call Poopsie any names in return, huh? No, she just stood there turning purple and popping. Popping? Yeah, first her eyes popped out and then her girdle gave way and the rest of her followed suit. <laughs> Too bad. If Mrs. Folsom had only had a few comebacks, we'd have a countersuit and they'd cancel each other. Cancel each... Hey. Huh? Suppose I went down to the music store and rented one of those Webster recorders and then I called up Mrs. Folsom and got her to say some nasty things about Poopsie. We'd have the evidence for a countersuit right on the wire recorder. Why, Dennis? Yeah, I'm getting to be a pretty smart little sneak, huh? <laughs> you are. That's brilliant. You're darn right it is. When your wife said we didn't have a brain between us, she overlooked the long shot. <laughs> Okay, let her go, Dennis. I got the microphone right up against the receiver. Great. Here goes. Boy, I sure hope she's at home. Now, make sure she doesn't recognize your voice now. Oh, sure. Hello? Ach, strong on you, mein Herr. This is Otto von Blattenberger from the Blattenberger Brewery down dort in der Rode Piece von von Aufgespannten drin. What can I do for you, Mr. Blattenberger? Well, I need a horse to pull a wagon, and I hear you got a nice big fat one there. I? Why, whoever told you that? Uh, Mrs. Clara Anderson. She said at this number I would find a big fat horse named Gladys. <laughs> My dear man, I'm Gladys. Oh, yeah? You talk pretty good for a horse, you know that? <laughs> Say, you want to pick up a few oats uh, pulling a brewery bag in there? Oh, how dare that Clara Anderson say I was a horse. That miserable woman. Get ready, Mr. Anderson. The Iron Curtain's going up. I'm all set, my boy. Uh, now then, you tell me something about this uh, Clara Anderson. You are my little get Bruce. <laughs> Why, she's terrible. Uh, come again? She's obnoxious. Uh, come again? Don't you understand me? Yeah, but so far it's a little too clean. <laughs> Come on now, pour it on, dear. I'll say I will. Oh, she's the vilest, lowest, meanest, most revolting creature who ever lived. Who's that? Clara Anderson. Oh, good. We've got to mention the name from time to time in case somebody tunes in. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, Clara Anderson is... Oh, well, she's... Ugly? Yes. Stupid? Precisely. Two-faced? Extremely. Okay, now you've got the hang of it. Let's see how you do it alone. <laughs> oh, I just don't know things bad enough to say about her. Well, maybe I can throw you a couple of leads there. <laughs> how do you like the way she dresses? She looks like a warthog. Good. Uh, what kind of manners has she got? She was raised in a pigsty. Oh, you're cooking wunderbar, Kit. <laughs> 
tell me, uh, what kind of a mother is she? Oh, she isn't a bad mother. Ooh, you should have the mouth with soap washed out. <laughs> well, I just said she wasn't bad. Under the circumstances, that's a dirty word. But don't feel bad, you did fine. I'll be the schnitzel tut. <laughs> oh, boy, it worked. Did you hear her, Mr. Anderson? Did you hear her? And I'll bet that wire recorder got every word. What odds will you give me? <laughs> what? I just noticed that I forgot to plug it in. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Mr. Anderson, you know I never lose my temper, but the next time you lace Mrs. Anderson's corset, I hope you get knocked down by the recoil. <laughs> I don't blame you a bit, son. No, I'll have to call her again. Is it plugged in for sure this time? Positively. Well, it better be. Well, better not use the same voice this time, Dennis. She might get suspicious. Okay. Hello? Uh, how do you do? How do you do? <laughs> this is Renzi Monaghan from McSorley's Brewery. Put the horse on. <laughs> what is this? A game? Now listen, I'm late enough now for my hair appointment at Antonio's, and I won't stand for any more fooling. Goodbye. Oh, darn it, she's leaving for Antonio's. Quick, get your hat. I'm not of, out, of, out of ideas yet. <laughs> Gee, then, Antonio sure is a pal. Does his white coat fit me okay? Swell. How does that mustache feel? Is it too big? Well, it might be. Whenever I talk, it tickles my ear. <laughs> well, you'll get used to it. Now, I've got the machine ready in the next booth, and as soon as Mrs. Folson comes Antonio, in... Antonio, get... are you ready for me? We're off. Good luck, boy. Thanks. Antonio, are you... Oh, you're not Antonio. That's all right. My name is Cesar Giuseppe Garibaldi Pasquale Bacigalupo Pignatore Barbarelli. You can call me... You could call me Irving. You mean you're going to take care of me? My shoe. I'm going to take a good care of you, kids. Now, what can I do for you, huh? Well, uh, first I'd like a finger wave. Okay, hold up your hands. <laughs> I want my hair wave. Mamma mia, you say your fingers, but you really mean the hair? Certainly, and I want a facial massage, too. Okay, where? <laughs> Will you please stop being silly and go to work? Yes, ma'am. Here we go. <laughs> Mr. Fraser, I was trying to wave your hair and wave some of it bye-bye. <laughs> uh, don't you get mad, Baldy. I fixed it with a curling iron. Ow! Ooh, oh, you fool! You shouldn't have moved it. Now you got it a permanent way. You must be crazy. How did you get this job anyway? Mrs. Anderson, she told Antonio to let me wait on you. Mrs. Anderson, again? Push him out of the record. She's a coconut. Oh. <laughs> Beast, that's what she is, an awful, horrible beast. Louder, but don't run the words together. <laughs> oh, that Mrs. Anderson is the vilest woman on this earth. Yes? And she'd be a perfect example of what's wrong with the human race if she were a member of it. Half the girl. <laughs> Get a half a kid. You're darn right. <laughs> Listen to what I really think of her. I'm gonna go <laughs> Wonderful boy. And you got all those terrible things she called me right on this record. Yep. Oh, now you have to drop the slander suit. Yep. Dennis, just for this, I'm going to give you a blanket pardon in advance for the next ten stupid things you do. <laughs> which should carry you clear over the weekend. <laughs> oh, sure. Matter of fact is, I still have nine of them left. Huh? Well, you see, I made a little one pulling away from the hairdressers in your car. Happened to rip a fender off Mrs. Folsom's car, and she's suing you. Jenny! Oh, now, don't get excited. I fixed the last one, and I can fix this one. We'll collect more than she does, too. All you got to do is cross Main Street at 2.30, and I'll have Mrs. Folsom driving about 60 miles an hour, and when she hits you... Oh, for... oh, Mrs. Anderson, wait! No, not with the fire truck! <laughs> Here's wonderful news, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful news. Now there's something thrillingly new in Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather. Yes, something thrillingly new. Palmolive's famous beauty lather now brings you new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Millions of women will prefer beauty lather Palmolive over all other leading toilet soaps the minute they try it. For Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather now has a new, clean, flower-fresh fragrance for new allure. 
New charm. So ladies, forget all other beauty care and use palm olive soap the way doctors advised for a lovelier complexion. Just stop improper cleansing and instead wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day, massaging palm olive's wonderful beauty lather onto your skin for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. That's all. All types of skin, young, older, oily, respond to it quickly. Don't wait another day to try Palm Olive's Beauty Lather. You'll be thrilled by its new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Thrilled again by the fresher, brighter complexion doctors prove may soon be yours. For new loveliness all over, use big, bath size Palm Olive in tub or shower. With the music of Charles Dant in the orchestra, here's Dennis to sing his latest RCA Victor recording of... Three wishes. If I only had three wishes, here is just what I would do. First, I'd wish for days of glad. and true for my second wish a dream of only fireside for two Tune into another Dennis Day show brought to you by Palmoly Soap, your beauty hope, and Palmoly Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Only Luster Cream brings you Kay Dumit's magic blend, glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Yes, tonight. You can be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. Listen again next week for Colgate's Hour of Fun, Judy Canova, followed by Dennis Day. And for another great comedy program, here Blondie next Wednesday evening over your favorite NBC station. Proceeding was transcribed. I'm Dick Powell as Richard Diamond. Hear me tomorrow on NBC.